Welcome back. Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass has said it has been a priority not just to deal with the city's homeless population, but to make sure it isn't increased by the number of people who will be evicted from their apartments. Um, that effort is part of the Mayor's Fund from Los Ange for Los Angeles. It was established by Eric Garcetti. It's embraced by Mayor Karen Bass. Conway Collis is the president of the Mayor's Fund for Los Angeles, a former member of the California Board of Equalization. And uh, uh, anti-poverty programs has been your career, uh, pretty much. So uh, tell us, first of all, uh, as for, for those folks uh, who don't understand what the Mayor's Fund for L.A. is. So we're, we're uh, Conan, and thank you for having me. We are an independent, nonprofit organization. Um, the mayor is formally an advisor uh, to us, but we're the mayor's fund. And so part of Mayor Bass's overall efforts to reduce and ultimately end homelessness in Los Angeles, it's, her program is uh, comprised of prevention, moving people from the streets into housing, and building a hell of a lot more housing in, in all kinds of ways. We're leading the prevention part of that effort. And how difficult is that? <laughs> well, you know, look, we're, we're going to have uh, projected about 30,000 evictions in the city of Los Angeles this year. There were 6,000 in February alone. So unless we can stop people from becoming evicted and moving into homelessness, look, the, the mayor has moved thousands of people, an unprecedented effort, moved thousands of people off of the streets but unless we can address prevention and preventing evictions, there's going to be an inc actual increase in the number. So here, here's what we've done. Um, at this point, we've reached out directly and, and asked over 370,000 Angelinos if they're at risk of homelessness, if they need help, if they're at risk of eviction. And we've helped um, prevent between 25 and 30,000 people. How, how do you do that? So... Once someone says to us they need help, we've got uh, 51 caseworkers that work to connect people to all of the federal, state, and local programs and services and supports that they're already eligible for. This isn't any new government money. This is what they're already eligible for. And, you know, what people don't realize is the amount of money that folks are leaving on the table. I'll just give you an example. When someone's connected to the child care they're eligible for, that's the equivalent of $12,000 a year, and it frees that person up to be able to work and have a job without being concerned about whether their kids are taken care of. So the impact is enormous. By the way, the other thing we do is connect people to what legal services there are, which isn't much to avoid eviction. <laughs> right, but not to demonize uh, apartment owners. The fact is, is that th those rents were freezed for a long time, and they say, my costs weren't freezed. Uh, they, they've gone up. I have no, I have, I have no alternative but to try to raise rates, rents. A absolutely. Let, let's be clear. The landlords are anything but the enemy on this, because you know a lot of the, their, their mom and pops themselves. This is their retirement. They've got bills and mortgages to pay. Landlords aren't the enemy. So what we've tried to structure is something that's a win-win for both. That it, it, it assures landlords that look, this is a stable tenant. They can pay moving forward. And to the extent possible to see if there's anything that can be worked out on back rent. I mean, the fact is there's been a little bit of money available for it, but not much. We don't have any additional money to hand out. But what we are able to do is to try to work with landlords to say, look, the person can pay moving forward. Let's try to figure out what can be done on back rent. Right. So you're talking about money here. The state is facing a, what, $78 billion budget short, shortfall. So there's very little money coming out of Sacramento for this. And right. you're looking to not just the federal government, but to the private sector for help. You bet. Uh, and where's the money coming from there? So we've raised as part of our overall program is it's about $5 million a year just to do the preventive work that we're doing. Um, and to um, try to provide to help with legal services. We've uh, recruited uh, 350 private pro bono attorneys uh, to help provide some eviction defense, at least to the, get to the point where we're able to negotiate with a landlord to see if something can be worked out, um, particularly with being, people being able to, to pay forward. But the fact is, look, the city faces a deficit, the state faces a deficit, 
And I think the mayor has the federal government helping already with trying to move people from the streets. So money is an issue. Um, but one of the things we're doing, which is important, I think, is beginning of April, we're expanding the program. We're going to be providing the casework and the services for all of the 20-year-olds who are aging out of foster care and provide, making sure they're provided with housing. And there's a situation. The county actually has the money to pay for their housing. They can't get landlords to take it. And so one of the things that with the mayor's involvement that we can do is bring landlords together to be sure that the, this population of the very vulnerable youth, 50% who become homeless, and by the way, most of the people who are trafficked in California come out of the foster care system. So I think there are some innovative and forward-looking ways that we can do what we can without more government money. We're going to have the head of the California Business Roundtable on in a second, and he's going to talk about a ballot measure that the legislature and the governor fears so much they've gone to the California Supreme Court to try to keep it off, and that would require a, a vote of the people statewide and locally for any, uh, any tax hike. I assume you're very much opposed. I, you know, I, I am, again, because, um, and I know the Business Roundtable and others have, have been leaders in, in fighting it, and so my question to them is, Look, but both from a humanitarian basis, but also in terms of what do you want Los Angeles to be? Do you want, in terms of business, for thousands of people to be living on the streets, or do you want them to be housed? About 40% of the um, people who we have helped stay housed are families with children in the household. And preventing a child from becoming homeless has lifelong impacts in terms of the trauma. And similarly, the new program that we're starting in April that's um, providing the services to help um, those foster youth and juvenile justice involved um, young adults who are leaving the system, um, be sure that they have housing. Those are the kind of things that are transformative in terms of making a difference, n not just helping people now to stay off the streets, but in a permanent way to help them stabilize and leave productive lives. Uh, Conway Collis, thank you very much. The uh, head of the Mayor's Fund for Los Angeles, a career anti-poverty uh, public servant. Uh, thank you very much for taking Thank you for having me. Up next, we talk with the head of the California Business Roundtable about that ballot measure, which may end up on the November ballot and could cause some changes, certainly would cause changes, to the revenue enhancements at the state and local level when we return.